Hey guys, welcome back. This time around we're going to continue our discussion on biochemistry. In particular though, we're going to focus on organic molecules. Organic molecules are fairly easy to identify in nature because an organic molecule will always have carbon as its backbone. There's only one exception in nature where carbon is found in a molecule that is not organic and that's carbon monoxide. There are advantages for carbon to be the backbone of these molecules. And that is that every carbon element, atom has four valence electrons, which means that it can never gain nor lose electrons, simply share those electrons. Now remember, if they share equally, then we will have what's known as a nonpolar molecule. If they share unequally, then we'll have a polar molecule. There's four, four classifications of organic molecules we're going to focus on here. Carbohydrates lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Let's start our discussion by looking at carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are also known as sugars or starch. And they represent about 1 to 2 percent of the cell mass. Their major function is to supply the cell with an energy source. Carbohydrates are always easy to identify though because they're going to be made up of only three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they're typically going to be found in a one to two to one ratio. That means one carbon for every two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Now carbohydrates are going to be classified by their size and their solubility. Now this is one of those organic molecules though in which we have a monomer. A monomer is a building block. And in this case, the building block is known as a monosaccharide or simple sugar. And it will be used as the energy source of choice, but it will also be as a building block for larger and more complex sugars. Monosaccharides typically contain anywhere from three to seven carbon molecules that will form in chains or in ring structures. Most important monosaccharides are gonna be our pentoses, and our hexoses. Now let's take a look and look at the suffix on both those words. It's os. Anytime you see the suffix os on a word in this course, it's going to be associated with a carbohydrate. Os equals carbohydrate. Pentose means it's going to be a five carbon. Hexos means it's going to be a six carbon. The two most common pentoses are going to be deoxyribose and ribose. Now neither one of these will be used for any energy source in our body. These are specialized. These five carbon ones will actually be part of the backbone for our nucleic acids. You've heard of DNA and RNA, right? Well the D in DNA is that deoxyribose sugar there. The R in RNA is going to be that ribose sugar. The key players though that's going to be for energy source that are monosaccharides are going to be glucose. First and foremost, the six carbon. It has two isomers, which means two other molecules that have six carbons in them, fructose and galactose. Now these two isomers, fructose and galactose, will be converted though in the liver to glucose before they'll ever be used in an energy source. Again, what is an isomer? An isomer is going to be a molecule that has the same molecular formula but different orientation of the elements on that ring structure. So each of these glucose, fructose, and galactose have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. The ribose and the deoxyribose will have five carbons, 10 hydrogens, and five oxygens. Frequently, these simple monosaccharides will bond together to create larger structures. If I take two monosaccharides and chemically bond them together in a dehydration reaction, what I will get is a disaccharide. Now there's three types of disaccharides that you can see here. One is sucrose, which is table sugar, and it's going to be a combination of glucose and fructose. Another one is maltose, which is a combination of glucose and glucose chemically bonded together, and it's going to be found in malt sugars, for instance. Now notice the, the structure that you see holding those two together. That's known as an alpha bond. It is different than what you'll see in the third disaccharide. Third disaccharide between galactose and glucose 
it's going to make a molecule known as lactose. Now we know this is milk sugar. We also know that sometimes folks have difficulty digesting lactose, or they don't have difficulty digesting sucrose or maltose. Why? Well, it's that chemical bond. Notice that chemical bond looks a little bit like a Z. That Z is actually a beta bond. Now, before I can use any of these disaccharides as an energy source, I'm going to have to first break them down to their monosaccharide, which means that we'll have to break down either the alpha or the beta bond. It takes a different enzyme to break down the beta bond than it does the alpha bond. Frequently, folks will have the enzyme for the alpha, but not the enzyme for the beta. So when we take lactase, lactase is going to be the enzyme that breaks down lactose. Now frequently we'll find these monomers chemically bonded together in large storage units. These large storage units are going to be known as complex carbohydrates. Plants will store complex carbohydrates in the form of starch. Animals will store it in the form of glycogen. Regardless of whether it's starch or glycogen, it's composed of long strings of glucose molecules. So if you look at each one of these bead structures here, you're going to see that each one of these beads is going to be a glucose molecule. There happens to be one other structure that plants store that is a complex carbohydrate, and that's something known as cellulose. Cellulose is just like starch, except every other bond between the glucose is going to be a beta bond, and it takes a different enzyme to break that beta bond. Now, cows don't have that enzyme, but the bacteria in the cow's stomach has the enzyme to break down that beta bond. In our case, we don't have the, the enzyme to break that beta bond. So when we think of cellulose, we think of it as the fiber that makes up the bulk of our fecal material. But again, all it is is long chains of glucose molecules in which every other bond is going to be a beta bond. Now finally, where we're going to see this played out the most? We're going to see glucose played out the most in cellular respiration. Carbohydrates are the food stuff of choice for quick energy. Glucose is the primary foodstuff for aerobic and anaerobic cellular respiration. Each glucose molecule, when broken down aerobically in the presence of oxygen, can generate up to 36 ATPs. If it's not immediately used in process of energy, it will be stored in, in the liver and in the body cells as glycogen, that complex carbohydrate. But we have limited space in the body cells and in the liver for the storage of glycogen. So any excesses will be stored away as fat molecules in the adipose tissue. Now catch that. Excess carbohydrates, excess simple sugars results in the production of adipose tissue. So most of the fat that I've got going on with me is not coming from me consuming fat. It's coming from me consuming too much excessive simple sugars. Now let's reflect a little bit on the organic molecules. What are the four types of organic molecules? What's the key things about carbohydrates? What's the difference between a monosaccharide, a disaccharide, and a polysaccharide? And then where would we see glucose being used most frequently in our body? Remembering that only glucose is the molecule that we would find in our body if we were looking at our blood, because glucose is actually what we call blood sugar. Y'all have a great day. See you later.